first of all, there will be spoilers in this, I'm almost certain. I'm not planning to put spoilers in, but they are going to be there. So if you don't want that, stop watching now. However, you may realise, of course, that the fact that there are spoilers in something is not necessarily important if the quality of the work is good anyway, because the quality of the work can transcend the nature of the plot and the outcome and the resolution and so forth. The other thing I want to say is that I am not good at interpreting things as other people interpret them. I overinterpret. I make connections that don't exist according to other people, and basically I write my own inferior version of a film or a book when I watch or read it. This is about Cloud Atlas, the 2004 novel by David Mitchell, but also the film adaptation. Here's the book by David Mitchell, British author, not to be confused with the comedian. Now, there are six stories in this book. The first one is in the form of a diary in the, written in the 19th century by a man uh, travelling back from the Chatham Islands to San Francisco. The second st story is written in the form of letters uh, by an amanuensis of a composer in Belgium <clears throat> to a friend. A character who is the recipient of the letters appears in the third story and is written in this, uh, set in the 70s in the form of a thriller um, where somebody is attempting to investigate dodgy dealings going on in a nuclear power station. The fourth story uh, the, uh, is about a man who has to escape an organised crime uh, group uh, by travelling up north uh, in Britain and is set in the present day. Um, the fifth story is a science fiction story set in a future dystopian Korea uh, where a clone uh, called Sonmi 451 uh, is uh, working in a uh, corporate cafe. The final story is like Ridley Walker. It's called Slusha's Crossing and Everything After and is the only uninterrupted story in the book. This is set in a post-apocalyptic future way ahead of the others. There's a big gap temporally between the first stories and the final story. Each of the stories is interrupted by the, pre by the next one and then resumes. So the structure of the uh, book is first story, second story, third story, fourth story, fifth story, sixth story, which carries on and is the whole way through. That's the longest story. And then it goes fifth story, fourth story, first, third story, second story, first story. Um, each of the stories has a character in it who is a reincarnation of the person in the second story and there are minor events in each story which influence the events in the future stories. The uh, stories are um, in different styles and there is a dra dramatic sort of justification within the story why the previous story was interrupted. Each of the stories is regarded as unreliable by the characters in the next story and um, the language style also varies, which is quite interesting. Um, the, in particular, the interesting ones are in Sonomy 451, where the language is very commodified and sterile and uses a lot of genericized trademarks like Nikon for camera and so forth. Uh, and uh, the final story, which is, as I've said, is like Ridley Walker, has a much freer style. And I think maybe the idea is that they've been freed from technology and that's reflected in the language in the same way as Shakespeare in English is very freed from the structure of the Middle Ages. There is a theme of sixness all the way through. There's the uh, Cloud Atlas Sextet, for example, which is being composed by the composer in the second story. Uh, the um, person who's receiving the letters is called Six Smith. There are six wheel drive vehicles. Um, there are obviously six stories. There's a theme of unreliability of the narrator, and there is a theme of reincarnation in the whole lot. Um, the last story, which was the most difficult to read for me, um, Slusha's Crossing and Everything After, I, I just couldn't really follow it at all uh, because of the use of the language. Um, as far as film's concerned, I think that a film can exist um, on its own merits and doesn't have to be a faithful adaptation of a book or a story. I do also realise that the best adaptations in films are from short stories and not massive great long novels like this one, which has, in this edition... 529 pages. But that doesn't mean it's going to be a failure. I am quite excited by the film. I'm very much looking forward to it. It was the adaptation of the film that made me want to read the book. And one of the things I'm particularly interested in is the depiction of different races by characters of different ethnicities because the there is, for once, a Caucasian imitation, which isn't normal. Normally you see things like blackface, uh, the depiction of oriental characters by white people and so forth. 
in this book, there's going to be the, the, in this story, there's going to be the depiction of a white character by an Oriental, and I think that's going to be very interesting. And that's actually, I think, find that quite subversive as well. I'm also interested in knowing whether the styles of the different bits of the film are going to be in the styles of those sort of genres of film. So, is Sony Four Five One going to be like a science fiction film in the way it's filmed? Um, is the um, is the 70s one going to be like a sort of trashy action thriller and is it also going to be in 70s style like sort of Romeo plus Juliet for example um, and is the first film going to be like a period drama and is the uh, ghastly ordeal of Timothy Cavendish going to be like the um, the comedy uh, type thing um, so I'm very interested in all of that there are clear themes running through the whole lot which uh, I also hope are preserved I think they're going to have to lose a hell of a lot in order for it to work at all, um, but things can stand on their own. I mean, Blade Runner is nothing like, in many ways, is nothing like um, Do Android Dream of Electric Sheep, but it is still a masterpiece, as is Do Android Dream of Electric Sheep, and they can exist on their own and don't have to have anything to do with each other. They both work really well. Um, so, yeah, I think that's all I'm going to have to say for this, and uh, really looking forward to the film. Hope I'm not disappointed.